cancer or has a relative or friend who is battling cancer. You can be part of this conversation by sending in your comments, questions or just tell us where you're watching us from on eSacute across all social media platforms. Or you can contact me directly on my social media handles at Eve underscore Nyaga1 on Instagram and Twitter and Evelyn Nyaga on Facebook. My guest today goes by the name Prince Josh. He is a gospel artist and is a cancer survivor. And he's here to give a message of hope to every person who is battling or has a person who is struggling from the same. Welcome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Since I got the news, Nakuja at two five four on your show, I was so excited. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. We are Thank also you. excited to have you. Thank you so much. So, Tommy, will you grow up? Um, when I grew, when I grew, Kagi was a young man. I grew up in Kirinyaga County. So, yeah, I grew up in Kirinyaga County with the family of. Um, at the moment, I was the firstborn, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, mm -hmm. my dad is a pastor. That's the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So at what point did you know that you had cancer? Oh, so I, I credited to God because what happened is for no reason, that I had a glass, mm -hmm. at the time I had a colored juice, mm -hmm. and I had a But instead of my hand going towards the glass, it went away from the glass. Mm -hmm. So I had the devil was struck again. Yeah. So what happened nearly to Peleka, we had a family friend who happened to have a clinic. I got to Peleka for just to know what's up. Mm -hmm. Just because of lack of equipment, mm -hmm. uh, how could I could figure out what okay. exactly was going on. Yeah. But this much I told me that my left eye was not seen. Mm -hmm. Just your left eye? Yeah, just my left eye was not seen. So I got to put a referral to Embu General Hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, in Embu General Hospital is where they said we needed to go to operation like immediately. Yeah. Now what they meant by we needed to go to operation like immediately was they needed to take both of my eyes out. Mm -hmm. So uh, my dad being the man of faith, he is like I said, but this must not be um, the final uh, result mm -hmm. we are going to. So uh, let me cut you short, Kablo okay. and Dele. Yeah. How old were you at that point? I was a an year and a uh, few months. This okay. was 2001. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we got a referral to Kenyatta Hospital uh, with hope maybe to tap at a different report. Yeah. So on arriving to Kenyatta Hospital, there we were to the same The message. same thing, yeah. Yeah, in order to save my life, they needed to get into operation mm -hmm. and visit me. Mm -hmm. So um, they were... And did you understand what was going on? No, I was young. <laughs> I was young at the time. Okay. So um, my, my, my parents, uh, I, there is a form that you are granted in order for you to allow the process yeah. to go on. Uh, my dad at the point permitted the one that they were to remove the eye that was not seen because mm -hmm. something was happening that even the doctors at the time could not understand. Mm -hmm. Both of my eyes were diagnosed with the same condition mm -hmm. and now... Um, Which cancer was it? Retinoblastoma. Mm -hmm. And now what they were trying to stop was the cancer from spreading spread to the brain because mm -hmm. the eyes were right on. So my dad said, the one that cannot see, to you. Yeah, not both uh, And um, they did the operation, and by favor, uh, the doctors noted that my, my parents were not let in at the point. Maybe they were going a lot. Mm -hmm. This, again, is a lot of um, news to handle mm -hmm. for a young couple who had just yeah. had their firstborn. So um, the doctors contacted Germany mm -hmm. and explained that we have Joshua Mine and this is his condition, this is what he's facing. And two days after, a fax came in mm -hmm. and uh, it said that if you can be able to lift the kid right now, mm -hmm. he will try to save his yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. So um, this was a ray of hope for my dad, mm -hmm. who, who at the time was saying this has not to be the final. Uh, result that we're going to. Mm -hmm. So um, um, my dad went and tried to figure out how to get the documentation and the tickets and what have you, mm -hmm. and I was left to my mom. And uh, shortly after my dad and he had a kupata the documentation and whatever we needed to fly out. Mm -hmm. um, and um, when it came the day to fly out, mm -hmm. um, my dad did something that I believe was uh, life changing of for me, my past perception. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he said, he, told, he made a deal with God. Mm -hmm. like I said, Ma, 
go with my family in touch when I mm -hmm. At the moment, my dad was a pastor mm -hmm. of uh, church in Kwanda members of six people. Mm -hmm. six, six, six people? Yes, plus six in the <laughs> so three members. I went to, so, um, and just to back then, that didn't make sense. My mm -hmm. mom, when she was in high school, mm -hmm. um, she, they had this principle, Monyali Wapatia, um, a kind of hope or something, uh, that if at all you take uh, German as a language, mm -hmm. uh, now you fare very well and after that, after high school, we may give you a sponsorship to go to German. Yeah. So at this time now, fast forward to now, mm -hmm. my mom was fluent in German. So we flew out to Germany for um, and stayed there for some six months. Mm -hmm. And um, they just called my mother after some time and told her that we have done all that we could do. Um, we have tried our best. So go back to Kenya. Yeah. And um, you will be attending clinics and therapy sessions mm -hmm. for the last of his short anticipated mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. how, how long were you given? What, did they give you a timeline of how long you're supposed to live? The one that was given for was before I did the operation, mm -hmm. that was less than a month. The first diagnosis? The, when I yeah, in, ja in Kenyatta, I was yeah. into this. Mm -hmm. If we don't do anything, this is less than a month. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And cancer being something that requires a lot of money to mm -hmm. deal with and yeah. to make sure that everything is sorted out, mm -hmm. who was catering for the bills when you went for your operation to Germany? This was amazing. Um, when we were in Kenyatta before, because when they said we needed to be a lift team mm -hmm. to, to Germany with uh, immediate mm -hmm. action, at that time, as soon as the fax came in, yeah. a letter came in, and all my bills were paid. All, all your bills? All my bills were mm -hmm. paid, which we are, even to this day, we have tried to figure out who it was. Maybe it was... Up to now, you've never known who paid your bills. So, um, I believe me, I believe it could have only been called because I don't know how that would have been. That somebody cleared the bills, cleared everything. I now fast forward now to when we were in Germany and we were told to go back. My mom was told to go back because um, they had done what they could do. Mm -hmm. And at this time, their conscience was at ease. Cause mm -hmm. And if, you were, if at all there was something to fight, mm -hmm. they fought the battle. So, um, uh, my mom um, uh, packed everything and we went. My mom packed everything and... Kindly use this mic. Okay. Thank you. My mom packed everything and now we were headed to Kenya. Mm -hmm. And because we were given the diagnosis that we needed to attend some therapy sessions yes. for the short anticipated life that mm -hmm. was remaining for me. Yeah. But another thing supernatural happened, I'll call it. On the first um, um, clinic, first therapy session in Kenya, in Kenyatta Hospital, mm -hmm. there was no cancer, there was no trace of cancer. So even the doctors wow. were looking at the report so from Germany. So from the time when you came back to Kenya, yeah, yeah. and the time you went for your first therapy session, how yeah. in a span of how many months? Or how in a many span days? of a month. A month? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there was even like a confusion, they were looking at both the reports and asking how could mm -hmm. this I be? Hold your mic closer. Why would this be? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, uh, we have even done a song with movie and the tone of yeah, that song we'll was that, yeah. uh, b bigger than cancer because you know, um, when you look at cancer in this time and age, it has become a such a uh, monstrous mm -hmm. um, that once you get that is a that's dead, the end that's the end, there is no hope. Yeah. So in that, um, my daddy having have faced the same thing as yeah, young. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please talk to, to us about that yeah, before yeah. we go on. Yeah, mm -hmm. so my dad, um, when he was young also, he was diagnosed with cancer. What type of cancer? Um, his, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's Latino. I'm not sure about that. But he was diagnosed with cancer at a young age, mm -hmm. slightly older than me, mm -hmm. and uh, he fought that fight. So even him, Akiongelesha, the doctors, with the confidence he had that this could not be the end, mm -hmm. he had a background of some yeah, sort that some he was experience. going to. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So mm. he he also his cancer got cured. Yeah, he he got cured. He's, he's my dad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, wow, he's still around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Let's go back, Kidogo. Mm -hmm. um, when you were flying out to Germany mm -hmm. and your dad said that he'll, he'll not come accompany you, mm -hmm. why did, did he make that choice? Um, from, from my perspective, looking at it, mm -hmm. um, 
I think it was a moment in his faith mm -hmm. where he said, like, he, he made a deal with God, mm -hmm. a covenant with God of some sort, mm -hmm. that kindly, where end on a family young with, yeah. I mean, touch on the mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's what was in his that mind. Was, that was the reason. That was the reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, after, after you got to Kenyatta Hospital for your therapy session mm -hmm. and they discovered that there was no cancer. Mm -hmm. What happened after that? Obvious, you can imagine the peace that now flooded mm -hmm. my... How old were you? Coming back, because uh -huh. I, I went to Germany. I was living in Kenya was um, a year with a few months, so uh -huh. I came back six months, so roughly two years. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can imagine the peace, the joy that flooded my uh, my young parents who at the time had gone against all odds to mm -hmm. ensure that their son would still be on this side of heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you talk about you talk you talk you talk to your parents mm -hmm. and all of you together talk about this issue. Yeah, yeah. What do they tell you? What was going through their mind at that time? Um, and how are they dealing with it? Yeah, to be honest, on on the side of mom, because I also have them pictures. Eh? Mm -hmm. Um, Mom told me it was a hard time, a challenging time. Mind you, I'm the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you are the only child and, at, yeah, at that the time. time yeah. Yeah. So this was a tough time. And for my mom, especially who was in me during those um, therapy sessions, who mm -hmm. was with me, you know when you're, you're getting treatment for cancer, what usually happens is you are given a medicine that temporarily puts you to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean by that? Yes. So that you can be entered into that machine. Mm -hmm. So my mom used to watch me enter that machine for some time. And mm -hmm. you can imagine, there's usually no guarantee whether once you ent you are under that drug. And for a young baby, you have yeah, to understand yeah, that, yeah. that he will wake up that, again. Yeah, so um, it was a, a nail-biting moment for her, who I uh, watching that every day, every day. and. Um, so finally, them experiencing whatever the result that was, uh, mm -hmm. that their son now was rid of that and now you could move on with your life, mm -hmm. that has, in my perspective, had to be a, um, a, a confirmation yeah. Yeah, that God is real and that he really comes for those who call upon him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, since that time, mm -hmm. I believe that You've met people who are going through cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you relate with them, or what do you tell them, considering that you you battled and you beat cancer? Um, what it's evident people have approached me because you can see I was left with a scar yes, yeah. to show that the life drew me a battle and mm -hmm. I, God was victorious. Mm -hmm. People people approach me for my story. Mm -hmm. People even maybe at the at the service you may not know what they are dealing with, mm -hmm. and after sharing my story. Um, I, I see this glance of hope that only 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 somebody who has it at a first hand can be experiencing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the feedback I usually get, I have had in several situations somebody tell me, man, I'm going through it right now. Yeah. And this just gave me, uh, you started with something that where mm -hmm. there is hope, there is a will. Yes. And they say that this has given me hope and mm -hmm. has given me the will to fight. And mm -hmm. you know when there is a will, there is a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually had that from you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I had that from you. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. um, since that time when yeah. you found out that there was no cancer, mm -hmm. what has been, have you ever gone back to the hospital again for any treatments or? For cancer? Yes. No, that was it. Uh -huh. That and was it. And this is 18 years later. 18 so years later. Yeah, I have wow. been strong. Uh -huh. So what I think now for me, the battle that I was left to fight was, because mm -hmm. now that happened when I was young. Yeah. Now as I grew up, I had to ask myself some questions on why this had to happen to me? Mm -hmm. What maybe desire I did I deserve to get it? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And um, I won't lie. At a point in my life, I passed through depression. Mm -hmm. But all that changed when and I found uh, my let purpose. Let me just cut you short before yeah. you go on. Mm -hmm. When you when you're thinking about that and asking yourself, why did this happen to me? Mm -hmm. Is it because that people are looking at you differently just mm -hmm. because it's only one? one of your eyes that can function mm -hmm. and that is putting pressure on you. Mm -hmm. Was that one of the reasons? As a young kid? Yes. Yes, that was yeah. part of it. Uh -huh. And the, uh, the other one was that I saw children with, with maybe, I will call it a normal mm -hmm. or some sort, who had who, children who, who didn't have to go through it. Yes. So I asked myself, why did I have to be the one who went through it? Mm -hmm. 
And um, that question, I quickly answered it when I got my purpose. Uh -huh. And my purpose in life is to help people live a successful life. Uh -huh. As I mentioned, not now only people who, have, who are going through uh, cancer. Yeah. As you are, I'm sure you are conscious of, people are in this time and age are going through depression. They are, a people lot. People are fighting with self-image. People are doing all sorts of things to try to improve on themselves because yeah. people have that feeling of less than or mm -hmm. I, I, I'm that, not enough exactly yeah. so I have again and again encountered it. this I, I think was the people who assisted me personally to, to find out okay this is not what I'm looking at it if I shift mm -hmm. my focus on it it can be something different mm -hmm. somebody once uh, approached me it was like a girl told me that she, um, I have been fighting with my weight mm -hmm. and just seeing the way you are confident seeing the way that you are not afraid to share your story mm -hmm. you have given me a new perspective on yeah. it and I will you've given her hope exactly mm -hmm. so I found okay this ho word hope is recurring in my life mm -hmm. from different mouths even after I tell a story to whoever I tell I told it to they would all in their wording trying to give me the feedback to my story they w they had to in, uh, invite the word hope mm -hmm. so i okay i noted that now this is my purpose yes and now i started looking for a medium of how i was going to spread this message of hope uh, i looked should i be a presenter so okay <laughs> maybe talent young we engage a figure mm -hmm. i looked around and i saw the way medium that i could have passed this message at a large scale was through music yes and that's where my mm -hmm. everything changed for me and now i looked at it from a different perspective mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay so assuming that you met a person mm -hmm. who was just given her his or her diagnosis of cancer mm -hmm. today or yesterday. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Don't lose hope. Mm -hmm. Cause if at all I, I, I taking back to my story, if at all my dad and my mom lost hope mm -hmm. and uh, and stopped fighting, mm -hmm. cause at the time all odds were against them, um, it would have been different. Maybe we would have never met. Yes. So the message that I is I would tell that person is please. I know it will not be easy. You see, trying it's to not. pass a fantasy will be a lie on my side. Mm -hmm. It will not be easy, but as much as you can, mm -hmm. please cling on to that hope. And it's like this. Um, there's this illustration in photosynthesis where they put a plant in a box, mm -hmm. cover it, then make a hole in the other corner. Yeah. After some time, that plant will yield to that light. Yes. So if at all there is a ray of hope in whatever. Mm -hmm cling to it yeah. just lean to it and focus on it mm -hmm. yeah yeah you are given a month to live mm -hmm. and here you are 18 liters yeah. yes and um talk to us now about let's get into your music mm -hmm. is it that was it you battling cancer or fight sorry fighting cancer mm -hmm. the reason that got you to music or did you have a talent deep down oh, what, <laughs> what do you mean by that okay mm -hmm. Before, if, uh, let's assume that cancer was not there. Okay. Would you still do music now? Yeah, I would still do uh -huh. music. So it was a talent. It that was just what brought out exactly. the talent. It was just part of my story. Mm -hmm. But I would not, I would, because it's part of my story, mm -hmm. I, I cannot, uh, what to say, turn a blind ear to it. Yeah. It was part of it. Because what I used to do and how I started music mm -hmm. was, in high school, um, I noted that even by ABCD, mm -hmm. maybe uh, my passion was not there. Yeah. So what I used to do is I used to go in the corner and just write songs. Mm -hmm. And this kept me occupied at the moment mm -hmm. to, to, to channel my thoughts because I had some time where I had to battle thoughts. And you know how thoughts can be suggested yes. sometimes, yeah. either on the negative or the, yeah, positive. the positive. So what I used music at that point to do, relating it to cancer, mm -hmm. was I used to uh, use the craft of creating songs to keep my mind in a certain place that mm. I wanted it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And it just happened that the songs I was writing at the time were about wow, hope, uh -huh. were like poems or letters to myself about uh -huh. hope. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, greater than cancer, bigger mm -hmm. than cancer. Mm -hmm. Who got to who? Is it you or movie? Um, what happened is. Um, we, we, we have been meeting with Mbuvi previously in mm -hmm. different occasions, mm -hmm. uh, but on this specific time we met in Kericho, mm -hmm. and uh, in Kericho he, 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 we had some 
time to talk. Yeah. And I shared my story. And he himself also opened something I never knew mm -hmm. that his mom had passed from cancer yeah. in 1999. Mm -hmm. Right about the time you were born. I was born in 1999. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe in destiny connection, connectors and I believe in perfect timing and I believe that all things work together for good. So through that, um, we exchanged contacts mm -hmm. and uh, we had conversations from there and we uh, asked ourselves how we can add to this conversation of cancer and change the perspective of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so tell us about that song. Bigger Than Cancer mm -hmm. with Bovi mm -hmm. is out, we released it just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the purpose of this song is, as I said, that we are not selling just false hope. We are yes. not just it's trying not to come and delude people and tell mm -hmm. them that, okay, now this is all done, it's all fought. Mm -hmm. um, but what we are trying to bring to the conversation is bring that hope. Mm -hmm. To bring that hope, the, the chorus goes, God is bigger than cancer, this I know, this I know. There is nothing impossible, nothing's too hard for him. When he steps in the room, he will make all things new. As I, I give the illustration for with a box. Yes. I want, or we want, mm -hmm. people to shift their focus from the trouble, from the problem, which is the cancer, and focus it on God. Mm -hmm. And just like that little plant yielding itself to the light, mm -hmm. once you take away your mind from the problem and focus it on God, mm -hmm. there will be a new regenerated hope in that. Yes. So that's the purpose of the song. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, you're not here to give people false hope because mm -hmm. you've been through that. And I believe yeah. the best person to give someone hope mm -hmm. is someone who has gone through whatever you're trying to to give them hope to yeah, yeah. yes mm -hmm. and um i want us to wind up but mm -hmm. before we do yeah, yeah. um could you please share with us your social media pages yeah. where someone can find you mm -hmm. and your music and mm -hmm. then maybe you can tell them if they wanted to talk to you mm -hmm. i believe now that you are where you are mm -hmm. you have so much to tell people yeah. and to talk to them about mm -hmm. there's someone maybe who is going through something deeper mm -hmm. and they would like to talk to you yeah, yeah. yes so uh, in my social media account is Prince Josh, P R I N C Y J W O S H. Prince Josh, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, every social media, and on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, if you would message me there, and we'll talk, we'll link up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So since you're here mm -hmm. and you said that your purpose is to give people hope, yeah. have you had, have you, ha have you encountered people that you've actually? Mm -hmm met with, mm -hmm. talked with, mm -hmm. and they got out of what they were battling with or dealing with. Yeah, yes. like depression. Other than the person who was, the lady who was struggling with her weight. Yeah, uh, personally I have I have something, an, an initiative that I call Class of the 21st Century. Mm -hmm. And what it consists of is um, making people conscious that we may have all sorts of differences in our minds, but we all share one thing that is the basis of life, mm -hmm. which is life itself. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, through that initiative, I usually go to high schools, I talk to you, they have people who I mentor, mm -hmm. and I have seen um, cases of depression, mm -hmm. and I will not credit myself. From people in high school? From people in high school, yeah. From people in university, even people who are old enough to be my parents. Yes. So um, I have seen, I have seen um, people come with depression, people come with low self-image, and I'm not credited only to myself because I have a team that I work with, mm -hmm. and it has, I have a testimony now that, okay, I used to battle with that. Mm -hmm. And some of those people are the ones who are part of my team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hope, the power of hope is so powerful. Yes, if you strong. could understand, if you could just give somebody hope, you mm -hmm. would find the other way. Mm -hmm. So that's what we try to present, and it has worked marvelously up to now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, so thank you so much for thank making you. time to join us. Thank you so, so much. So I want you to give your last words mm -hmm. to someone who is going through something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my word and my advice is this, about the power of the mind. I want you um, to focus on the right things because the mind ha is can be divided into two parts, theoretically speaking. You can divide it into the negative part and the positive part. If you focus on the negative part, the thoughts will be generated which will tell you are less than, you are nobody, all those that will make you feel low. 
and feel as if you don't deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, there is positive thoughts, which is the creative part where you can um, focus on happy thoughts, things that will uh, ensure that there's progress in your life. So choose the positive side. Mm -hmm. That's my only message now. Nice. Yeah. So thank you so much once again. Thank you for having and me. And we hope that you continue delivering that message of hope. Yeah, thank yes. you. We surely do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kindly um, tell us your social media pages once more. I'm Prince George, P R I N C Y J W O S H, Prince George, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all social media platforms, and also YouTube. All right, thank yeah. you. Thank you so uh -huh. much. So, as you've heard from Prince George, he is here to deliver a message of hope and you need to stick to the positive thoughts. So that's all we had for you on Real Talk today. But don't you go anywhere. More of e circuit coming your way. And up next is Bigger Than Cancer. Prince Josh and Movie Movie.